Hi everyone, this is Anthony Rees and uh, today we're going to take a look at doing the Chef Client install on one of our nodes and then we're going to register that node with the Chef server that we created in the previous video. So um, if you're looking to be able to do the Chef server install, go and have to take a look at my previous video and then come and watch this video which is part two where we will uh, look at setting up and configuring our Chef server and we will install a Chef client uh, on our node and register it with the, with the Chef server. So in the previous video, you might remember that we logged onto our Chef server and uh, we had also created an organization called Testco. Okay, you might remember that. And I'd also created a user for Tesco, which was me, right, Anthony Rees. So today, what we're gonna do now is we're going to take a node and we're going to have it register with, uh, Chef, with, with Chef Server, and we'll be able to see that through the UI um, via Chef Manage. Uh, and of course, you can do all of this via the API as well. But I'm gonna use the UI today just to give you a bit of an idea while you're learning. And then of course, you can then switch across and use um, all of the command line um, tools and uh, you don't need to use the UI uh, whatsoever. Uh, but I'll show you the quickest way to be able to do this. So what you wanna do is once you've got your chef, your chef server up and running, um, what you wanna do next is you want to go and create yourself a role. Okay, so go and create yourself a role and call it base. Okay, and you'll see why later. So when we actually go and register our node, we're also going to, uh, we're also gonna set a role for it, a default role for it to use. And that'll stop us from getting an error message later on. The other thing that you're going to want to do as well is you will need for your organization you'll want to go and reset your validation key. So when you click on the reset validation key, it will come up and it'll give you a new PEM file, okay? And so what I want you to do when you, when you do that is take a copy of it from here. And uh, you don't have to do this if you don't want. When you, you can actually use the organization.pem file that you created when you, register, when you did the server install originally. But I'm gonna make it easy today. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the reset validation key. So basically all you have to do is click on it, take a copy of it, and then go and log into your node, okay? So we'll go and jump into, into my node. And there's just a number of steps that we need to go through. So it's not, it's not hard at all. Um, and the first thing, so you've taken a copy of your, of your PEM file. And what we'll do is, uh, we'll go into the etc slash chef directory. Right. And the first thing that we're gonna do is, so you'll need, to make, you'll need to make that directory. So you'll need to create the chef directory and it'll be completely empty, okay? So the first thing you wanna do is you want to, you wanna go and create your, your PEM key, okay? So, You'll remember that when we went and had a look in Chef Manage, to find out what you what your validator is going to be called, uh, go into the policy area and click on clients, and you'll see in there that I have uh, the name of my organization dash validator. Okay, this is not the PEM key that you use to uh, to be able the, the, to be able to authenticate itself the PEM key that you're going to use was back in the administration and click on your organization and reset your validation key so take the that key and paste it in here all right so the one that you got from administration and uh, based on your organization and resetting that key so that's the first step you've now created yourself a uh, a key okay and that's, going to, and that's going to be used when you go and register for the first time. So the first time that your node goes and registers, it'll pass that particular key to uh, tell the server that it's got the, uh, the, the organization's validation key. And then when it validates itself, the chef server will then pass back the, uh, the client PEM key. And uh, you'll, you'll see that um, once we go and actually register it.
So the second step is to go and create ourselves a first boot.json. Okay, so if we take a look at that key, it's pretty if that file, it's pretty simple. All it is is it's listing the it's creating a run list and it's assigning it to the role of base. So you remember back in the chef server. Uh, we created a role under the policies called base, okay? And it's basically an empty role. So what's gonna happen is on it back on our node, when we go and uh, run the chef client, it will then go and register itself with the chef server and it will assign it a role of base, okay? And it'll just be a default base role uh, to add it to. You can call it anything you want, uh, but I've just used the word I've just used the word base, okay. Right, so the second, so that's part two. The third part is now we need to create our client.rb file. And the client.rb file, the client.rb file is, uh, well, it was a little bit tricky for me, I must admit. I had to play around with it a couple of times. So I'll spend a bit of, a bit of time uh, explaining it all to you. So you'll need to give it a log level. I've just set mine to in info and uh, a log location as well of standard out. Um, in terms of the SSL verification mode, I've put no verification on because as you can see, uh, mine's just a test environment and it's non-secure, okay? So I don't wanna be checking that. Uh, so I've just switched it off. And, uh, and I've also um, told it to check the API, uh, to set the checking of the API certification to false. So it's not gonna be checking any of that either, right? So I've, I've turned off a lot of my security essentially just uh, to be able to get this up and running for a test environment. So this is where it starts to get interesting now. The chef server URL is, don't just give it the, the URL of, uh, of your chef server, which in, in my case is the, uh, is the actual, uh, IP address of the machine. I've got this running in, in AWS. Uh, but you have to pass it uh, organizations and also the name, the name of your organization too. So it'll be this one here. Okay, so my organization is called Testco. So therefore I need to give it the, the full, or, full slash organizations slash Testco, okay? Then the, the, the validation client name. So the validation client name is important you can't just call it testco, right? Because that's not correct. If you go into, if you use chef manage, it's probably the easiest way, go into policies, click on clients, you'll see the name of your client is testco-validator. So that's, that's the name of mine. Um, and that's what you have to put in here. The validation key is that PEM file that I just created before. Okay, so that's where I went and I created that PEM file. I went into administration on my organization and I reset the validation key uh, to get that. You could have just used the PEM file that was created from the org when we did, um, when we did the, uh, the initial install of Chef Server. It's completely up to you how you wanna do it. You could just uh, do a, um, an SCP and copy it straight from your Chef Server straight across to your node if you wanna do that. Um, a lot of people keep them securely in, uh, uh, in, on secure sites like um, S3 buckets and things like that, and they just download them uh, at runtime, and that allows the machine to authenticate itself. I don't mind how you do it, it's completely up to you, uh, but you will need that validation PEM file. And then finally, you need to give it uh, a unique node name, okay? So I'm just gonna call mine test1 for this particular example. I'll also uh, take a copy of this and pop it into my GitHub repo uh, so that you can see the, and copy the copy this and then modify it for yours so that you get the syntax right. Uh, Cause it is a Ruby file and if you get the syntax wrong, it's not gonna work. Right, so what have we done so far? We've created our Tesco validator uh, PEM file We've created our first boot JSON file, which gave, uh, which gave us a, a default role. And we've created our client.rb uh, file, which is giving our node all of the details about the, uh, the chef server, so where to locate it, and to also uh, register it as well. The next part that we do is we basically run, so if I go to the docs site, uh, you can find more information about the .rb, so the client.rb file, 
uh, on the docs.chef.io uh, site and you can read all about it and it will give you examples and tell you all of the different settings that you can use. So I highly recommend you probably have a read of that before you go through and, and do this. And I'm using the install via URL link. So you can install via Bootstrap if you want and there's also uh, a Windows uh, installation that you can do for the uh, for the, for the registering of nodes with the Chef server. So I'm going to be running the, uh, the install.sh um, file, so which is basically a prepackaged um, installation script and it uses Omnitruck okay, to go and do the install. So all I'm going to do is run that, run that curl command. Okay. And once the curl command has completed, right, um, it'll do the installation for me and uh, then I'll be ready to execute my chef client and uh, and then get it to uh, to go and register with the chef server. So let's give that a go. So it's just uh, running the, the chef client um, and then passing it the JSON file, which is the first boot JSON that I created before, which is going to give it the role as well. Now upon um, completing that, so once that's that's run and it's registered, if I do an ls, you'll actually see that I've got a client pem file now. That client pem file was passed to me back from the chef server itself, okay? So I passed it the Tesco validator pem. Um, the chef server has registered, regis registered it now. So let's go and have back and have a look at the node section. And here you go, you can see my test node, uh, Red Hat, there's the fully qualified domain name, the IP address of the machine, uh, how long it's been up for. So it's already starting to pull details from that. That machine's been running for two days and it's checked in just a couple of seconds ago. So that was the first time that we brought it in. If I click on it, I can now see that, uh, that the details are about that particular machine and I can also see the run list, right? So the run list, it's got that base, uh, which is an empty, essentially an empty, an empty role that I've assigned to it. I could up, I could upload uh, cookbooks and recipes to the chef server and then I could start dragging them across and have it run there. So I could run the RHEL hardening uh, cookbook against it and that'd go through and do all of the sys recommend recommended hardening options for RHEL 7, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so once the chef server's registered it, it will pass you back that client pem. You can now go and you can run a cookbook which will go and delete the validator.pem file um, off your machine because you no longer need it anymore. It's going to, from now on, this node is always going to authenticate itself using its own um, unique client.pem file and that's how it will securely uh, talk to the chef server. I hope that was um, helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Probably the best way to grab me is on Twitter. Uh, and uh, yeah, post your comments um, if you've got any and I'll try and help you out. The next video that I'll do is uh, doing the Chef Automate install. Uh, and if you need help with doing the Chef server install, go and take a look at my other video. I'll pop the link uh, in this one. Thanks very much, everyone. Have a great day.